I want to be the very best that adequate will have to do To catch them is my real test Because I have no clue Pokemon, gonna catch a few Because trying to catch them all is a commitment that I cannot make So I'll probably give up and only catch a few of them Oh, Hello, I'm Ash Ketchum and it's all gone horribly wrong for me Sign that Sign that Hello and welcome to Big Friendly Grub. I hope you are well and as you can tell from this intro of me making an absolute d out of myself as usual, it's time for another video game grub. And today it's, well if you can't guess, it's Pokemon! And if you don't know what Pokemon is, where the hell have you been? It's absolutely everywhere, you can't avoid it these days. I mean you couldn't avoid it before, it's been huge since like the 1990s. You've got a cartoon, you've got a film now in Detective Pikachu, and that's not even discounting the games. It's massive over in Japan, obviously. It's um, got like, yeah, anime and so much merchandise. It's so much merchandise over here. But obviously at the core of it is the video games. You've got the games that kind of started on the original Game Boy. You've got like the ones that came over onto the Nintendo DS. And now you've got the newer ones in the shape of Pokemon Sword and Shield. And those are the ones that I'm going to be focusing on today. Even if you haven't played either like the core games on like the Game Boy, the Nintendo DS or anything like that, then you've probably at least given Pokemon Go a try. I, I know people who have never really got into the main Pokemon games, but they absolutely adore Pokemon Go. For me, it was entirely f far too long. I, I don't have time to go out and go find all like these different Pokemon. No, 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 it's not for me. But I digress, I'm going to be focusing on Pokemon Sword and Shield on the Nintendo Switch today, because in Sword and Shield, there is a new mechanic where you can go out and explore the world, go catch a Pokemon, but now you can set up camp and you can make food. And the main food, in fact, the only food you can make within the camp is curry. I don't know why curry. Perhaps they just absolutely adore curry in Pokemon world. But who can blame them? I love curry as well. We Brits love a curry. But one of the things that stuck out for me in the list of curries that you can make is toast curry. Now, we Brits love curry, as I just said, and we love toast. But toast curry? Never heard of it. But I've looked it up, I've done a bit of research, and apparently it is a thing. So it looks like to me, from my research, that the base curry of um, Pokemon Sword and Shield is a vegetable curry, it's got mushrooms, carrots, potato and stuff like that. But the toast for our toast curry is actually made from a Japanese bread, it's called Hokkaido and it's a milk bread, so it's made predominantly with milk and it's supposed to be a very light fluffy bread that then gets toasted and is served with the base curry and it's supposed to be delicious. So I'm going to be giving that a go today, I'm going to give it a try. I have absolutely no idea how it's going to turn out, but I'm excited to give it a go and hopefully it will make for a fun video. And even if this goes horribly wrong, then hopefully me making a complete <laughs> out myself would be entertaining anyway. So enough of me talking and enough exposition, let's get started with making toast curry. Pokemon, gonna catch them all. Right, we're gonna start off by making our Hokkaido, our milk bread, and to do that, first, apparently, we need to make like a cooked starter for it, which is not something I've ever done before. But I'm gonna roll with it, this is apparently how it's done. So I'm gonna add in about a tablespoon's worth of flour into this pan over a medium heat. Then apparently I need to add in 60 milliliters worth of milk and 60 milliliters worth of water as well, which I've got combined together into uh, this jug and I'm going to pour that in and stir that together. Now apparently I need to cook this for about four or five minutes until it becomes a mashed potato consistency, at least that's what I saw. So I'm going to give that a go and see if that actually comes together. This might take a while. The recipes that I've seen that have made this bread have been all in cups so I've had to do some conversions along the way. So this is entirely winging it so I just I hope this goes right. See this does look to be thickening up so I'm probably nearly there, I've just got to keep an eye on it and I don't want to overcook it. So you can start to make like a figure of eight in it almost. Okay this is thickening up so I'm probably going to take this off the heat in a moment. This is kind of looking like a white sauce, a roux. So this is probably what they mean I think. So yeah I'm going to get the heat turned off and then it says to let this cool to room temperature. So I am going to, yeah, this looks good to me. I'm going to take this off. I'm going to go let it cool to room temperature. And then we can actually get on with making the core of our dough. Right, for making our actual dough, we're going to need 
500 grams worth of bread flour, strong white bread flour, in that goes. Gonna be using my trusty stand mixer. Now this is a milk bread, and one of the things it says to add is milk powder, and I haven't seen or used this stuff in God knows how long. I think the last time I actually had any in any shape or form was probably at my nan's God knows how long ago, probably in some tea or something. I haven't seen this stuff for ages, and it's so weird buying it, and I have absolutely no idea what I'm gonna use it for. But it was quite insistent that it, you should use milk powder, so I've got this, and it says to add in a tablespoon's worth of dried milk powder, so in it goes, I'm not gonna question it. Apparently it will help it make it fluffier or something, I don't know. And we want seven grams of yeast and about the same as salt on the other side of the bowl as always. And I'm gonna make a bit of well in the middle because we've got a bunch of stuff that I'm gonna add into this. So starting off with our starter, which has come to room temperature and looks like a big glob of goo now, lovely. But apparently this is needed. So in it goes, get off my spatula. Thank you. And we want 115 grams worth of butter. It didn't specify whether it should be like solid butter or melted butter. So I've gone somewhere in the middle with nice soft butter. So I'm gonna put that in. And also one beaten egg. Then from the recipes I found, it said about a half a cup of milk, which in English I think is about 120 milliliters. But as always with any liquids, with any bread, I'm gonna do it by eye. I'm gonna start off by putting some of this in and then if I need to add more, I'll add more. Basically, I think we're gonna want a really nice, smooth dough. So I'm gonna put this in until I get that. So I'm gonna pop some in now, bring this down, and let's start mixing it together. So I think I need more. Right, I've added all my milk, but it's still looking a bit dry, so I'm just gonna add in a bit more at a time until it starts to come into a smooth dough. There's just still some dry crumbs and stuff at the bottom really doesn't take too much for this to become too wet. So I've just added in probably about another 10 milliliters, if that. Oh, it's trying to escape back in there. Get back. See, that's looking a lot more smoother, a lot more malleable, much less drier than it was. So this now needs to be kneaded for probably about a good, at least five minutes in the uh, stand mixer, if not a bit longer. So back in that goes. Back onto a medium speed to be kneaded for about five to 10 minutes. Right, this has had a good eight minutes worth of kneading and it is a, now a lovely soft dough. So this is gonna go back into the bowl and like most bread doughs, it's gonna be left to prove for about one hour or until it's doubled in size. So while that's happening, why not go do something else to occupy your time? Maybe go catch some Pokemon. Maybe I'll just go do this the proper way. Ha! In your face, worker Francis! Right, it's been over an hour and our dough has had time to prove and is doubled in size. So let's get this out of here. I'm going to use my dough scraper just to get underneath here. It's lovely and light and soft. Oh, it's so light, it's lovely. I'm just going to knock the air out of this and I'm going to cut this into four evenish pieces. And yes, this is one whole loaf but it's got a specific look to it, this Hokkaido bread that I've seen. So that's into four evenish pieces. And I'm gonna shape them out into kind of like rectangle shapes. I've got my tin here, so I'm probably gonna want them, yeah, they are gonna be rolled up. These four pieces will make one whole loaf. It's hard to explain. <laughs> Hopefully once I do it, it will all make sense, but it's got a specific look to it, this bread, and this is hopefully what's gonna help us achieve it. So I've got that into a bit of a rectangular shape and then just gonna roll it up like so. And then that's going into the tin like that. So that's one. And I'm gonna do the rest. There we go, there's our four pieces. Now this will be one big loaf, but these four individual like pieces will hopefully help give it its unique shape. It's hard to describe really, but I'll put a, like a thumbnail up in the corner of the video so you can see how it's supposed to look and we'll see if mine comes out looking like that. I have no idea if it will, but I'm gonna let this now 
prove again for probably about another hour, covered with a clean tea towel, and I'm gonna go put this into a warm place to go and prove, and hopefully double in size at least. Right, our dough has had its second prove. It's had just over an hour, probably about an hour and 10, and it should have doubled up in size. Let's have the big reveal. Whee, there we go. Ooh, that has doubled up, well, probably more than doubled up, actually. That looks really good. And you can see what I mean, how this is now starting to form a shape, like bumps. And that's kind of the look that we're gonna go for. So hopefully this will bake up into a whole loaf with some nice ridges in the top. That's kind of the thing that I'm going for. So that looks about right so far. So from the recipes that I saw for this, it says to brush the top with heavy cream, which is double cream over here, which I have never ever done to a loaf of bread before, but I'm rolling with it. They do things a little bit differently over in Japan. So I'm rolling with it. I'm guessing it's to give it a nice shine and gloss and a bit of richness. I'd be interested to see how this works. Right, that is all brushed with cream. I have never brushed anything with cream before. I've done butter, I've done milk, I've done egg, but never cream. But there's a first time for everything. So I'm gonna get this into the oven. I am going to do about 190 degrees C because it's a fan oven. And I don't wanna blitz this because uh, it seems quite light and delicate. So I don't wanna create it. So it's gonna go in at 190 degrees C. All the conversions will be in the description. And this will be for about, I'm gonna give it 25 minutes and see how it goes. Right, our Hokkaido milk bread has had 30 minutes. I gave it 25, but I thought it could do with a bit more browning. So if I can get this actually out of the oven, here we go, whee, there we go. That looks lovely and brown and beautiful. And you can see what I mean about this is kind of now joined up. We've got that ridged shape along the top. And that's kind of what I was going for. Now we just need to leave this to cool down for about five minutes so I can actually get it out of the tin and we can have a look. Right, this has had about five minutes to cool down, so I can now hand work to get it out of the tin. Be very careful with it. And there we go. Oh, so you can see what I was talking about. So it's kind of got that shape to it that is, it's one loaf, but it's made out of those four pieces. It's got that ridge top, and that looks pretty good to me. That will be quite nice. Oh, it smells really good as well. It smells, I don't know, it's just got a richness to it. Kind of like brioche, but, that's probably because of the butter and the milk, but because there's no sugar in it, it probably won't be quite as sweet. So I'd be quite interested to see what this tastes like just by itself. But obviously we're gonna to be toasting this and having this with our toast curry. So it's gonna be really, really interesting just to see how this goes with that. But this by itself looks really, really good. And we've already done one recipe already. So now I've just gotta leave this to cool down completely and then we can get on with making our curry a bit later. I'm looking forward to this. Right, it's time for us to move on to the toast part of our toast curry. It's been all about the toast so far and no curry, so it's time to curry on. Sorry, a lot of setup for a bad joke. For this stage, I've already done a whole load of prep because you don't need to see me cutting up a load of vegetables because that's what I've been doing. So we're gonna start off with our curry paste, which will be the base for our curry. So I'm gonna add into my food processor half a large onion, two red chilies, four cloves of garlic, sorry, I was bending down to pick up a bit of chili that I dropped, and also a nice big bit of ginger as well. So that's all in there. So get on the lid, lock it, because safety first, power on, and I'm gonna blitz this up into a paste. So you can see that has become a really nice paste and that will add so much flavor to our curry. And I will now pop this to one side and we can get on with the actual cooking part. Right, to start off with our curry, I'm gonna add in about a tablespoon's worth of sunflower oil, probably a bit more actually, and then a good wedge of butter there because the oil will stop the butter from burning. Just let the butter melt down. Got it on about a medium heat at the moment. I'll play around with the heat if I think it needs it, but I'm gonna start it off on a medium. Now that's melted down, I'm gonna add in the other half of the onion that we put into our paste. It's a nice large onion that I've cut into strips. And I'm gonna cook those for a couple of minutes in the butter and oil just to soften down a bit. Right, our onions have had a couple more minutes to soften and become more translucent. So I am gonna now add in our paste that we did earlier. Get all of that in and get that stirred into our onions. Oh, that smells incredible already. I'm just gonna let that cook out for a couple of minutes. Look at the vibrancy of that paste, it's intense. And we're just gonna to add to that vibrancy by adding so many spices to this. So it's a heck of a list. So 
pay attention or just check the description or the recipe after this. So I'm going to add in three teaspoons of garam masala, two teaspoons of paprika, that's normal paprika, not the smoked kind, two teaspoons of coriander, a teaspoon of cumin, a teaspoon of chili powder, a teaspoon of cinnamon, half a teaspoon of cardamom seeds. These come from cardamom pods. Because I'm just using the seeds, I'm just using half a teaspoon. I was hoping to get ground cardamom, but they didn't seem to have it. So I'm just gonna use half a teaspoon of these seeds because quite frankly, it takes an age to get these seeds all out of these pods. Then I'm adding in two teaspoons of turmeric, which will give it another hit of yellow intensity. And then lastly, a teaspoon of chili flakes. That is a heck of a lot of spices, but it's gonna make this so flavoursome. I mean, this is not my recipe, but when I saw the amount of spices in here, I thought, whoa, that's gonna be jam-packed full of flavour. I say it's not my recipe, I have actually made some adjustments to how I think it should be done, but the base of this is what I saw for the Pokemon curry recipe. So I'm gonna get these all mixed in. So much flavour in there, whoa. And I'm just gonna cook these spices out for a few minutes to to take some of the rawness away from them because they are really intense at the moment. Not that intensity is a bad thing, but there's intense and then there's like absolutely blow your head off raw spice flavor. Right, the spices have had a few minutes cooking off, so I'm gonna get the vegetables into these. So we have got here two carrots, two good sized potatoes, and a whole pack of baby button mushrooms. So I'm gonna get these all coated in these spices. There's gonna be loads here, which is good, because then I can have some tomorrow as well. So those are all coated, so I'm gonna cook these for about five minutes. That will help soak some of those spices into the veg and just soften them up a little bit. Right, the veg has had about five minutes cooking in the spices, so I'm now gonna add in about 250 milliliters of really nice vegetable stock. We stir that in, and you can see some of the spices have start absorbing that, and it's already kind of turning into a sauce. But we're also gonna need two tins of chopped tomatoes, so in those go as well. Stir those right into there. I'm gonna nudge the heat up a bit now because we've got a lot of stuff in that pan. That's looking well combined and it's come up to a simmer as well, which is great because I'm gonna bring this heat down now so it can just have a gentle bubble away to itself for probably about, oh, I don't know, 20, 20 to 30 minutes and that will soften up those veg and reduce down that sauce and leave us with a really nice curry. I'm assuming it'll be a really nice curry. I mean, I'm going on basis that it's got so much flavor and really nice vegetables in here, it can't be anything but. So I'm gonna leave this to bubble away by itself for about 20 minutes when we can come back and we can work on our saffron rice because that's another part of the base of the curry from Pokemon, which is saffron rice, so we can work on that. So I'm gonna leave this and we'll come back. Hello, I thought while our curry's cooking, I'd give this a quick try, cut into it, see how it looks and just give it a taste by itself because I'm really curious about it. And before you ask, yes, I am sat on my floor with a table in front of me. All the other work services in my kitchen are currently occupado, so this was the best option. Plus it allows me to get into the shot, you lucky, lucky people. So I'm gonna give this a quick cut. Oh, this table is really rocky, and I don't mean the Sylvester Stallone character. Not the best angle for me to cut. Ooh. Oh, that looks really, really nice. That looks really, really soft. That looks good. Looks good to me. So I might cut a piece of this end off and try this just by itself. Oh, it smells really nice. It does have that kind of like brioche smell to it, but not quite as sweet because no sugar. No, let's give it a quick try. Mmm, no, that's nice. It's very delicate. It's a very light, delicate bread light delicate flavour and it's going to be really really nice I think once it's toasted and with that curry it's a really interesting combination I don't know who came up with it but I'm interested to try it but this by itself is really good and it ties me over because I'm really hungry I haven't had any lunch. Right our curry is nearly ready over here probably needs about another 10 minutes so that gives us time to get our saffron rice ready over here so I've got that on oh nearly forgot its handle fancy pan so I've got that over like a highish heat and I'm gonna add in a knob of butter into that and let that melt down. All right, our butter's melted, so I'm gonna add in the rice into that just to cook in that butter for probably about a minute or so. Adds a richness to this and toasts off that rice a little bit as well. 
How much rice will absolutely depend on how many people you are serving this to. This is just me, so this is enough rice for one person. About 75 grams worth. Just gonna keep this moving while I toast the rice, otherwise it will just burn and not toast. Then into this, I'm gonna add in a pint of stock that we had from earlier. And then I'm gonna add in a really good hint of saffron. And that is all the saffron I had left because I don't use it very often and it's expensive. And I'm just gonna let that rice cook away for about 10 minutes or so. Right, our saffron rice is nearly done, so we just need to finish off this curry with a couple more touches. So, we are gonna add in two tablespoons of yogurt. This will just freshen things up and also take away some of the heat from the spices because there's a lot of chili in here. Then to sweeten things up, we're adding in two tablespoons of honey, and I'm just gonna do that with estimated squeezes. Then stir that in. See, that's lightened up the color of that curry with that yogurt in it. Turn off the heat. Right, that's it. We can get our rice drained, our bread toasted, and I can serve up the toast curry and we can see what this is like. There we go. I'm gonna be really quick with this because this butter is melting, but that looks really good, I think. That looks pretty much bang on with what's in the video game. So I am going to give this a try because this has been taking all day. And if you look at the description of this in like the curry decks on Pokemon, um, it says it's an amateurish curry. Amateurish? It took all blimmin' day. Jesus, even the bread is like a good couple of hours at least. So whoever wrote that curry decks, geez, they've got a high opinion of themselves. But this looks really good. It smells great and just, oh, it's gonna be a good curry, I think. And you can't go wrong with a really good curry. So I'm gonna try the curry first because I think that's fairly traditional. Let's give that a go with some of the saffron rice. Got really good color on that saffron rice as well. Oh, wow. So much flavor to that. You've got so many spices in it. It is got a good kick to it. It's been toned down with that yogurt, but it's got a real nice kick to it. It's just a really, really good curry. Really nice rice as well. Just gonna try a bit of that by itself. Mm, really good. There's a bit of richness to it, cooking it in the butter first. And now that it's toasted, I'm gonna to try a bit of the milk bread, the Hokkaido bread. Mm. That delicate flavor soaked in butter. Can't go wrong with that. And I feel like, I think the idea is that you mop up the juices with the bread, which is good, because there's a good bit of sauce all around here. But I'm just gonna pop a little bit of the curry onto the bread just to try that directly just because it's toast curry and that seems like a thing to do. It's curry and toast. What more do you want? Like I say, we Brits like putting stuff on toast, but I'd never thought to put like curry on toast, but it works, it does, it's unusual, but it's tasty, it's really, really tasty. It takes a good amount of time, but this is literally just a base. You could add whatever you want into this curry. If you want to add in like chicken or beef or lamb or tofu or anything like that. It's just really good and it's come from a video game. It's come from Pokemon Sword and Shield and it's just really good. And I am going to go off and finish this off because this is my dinner. I'm having heady lunch, I'm quite hungry and this is a generous portion so I'm gonna go off and finish this. I put the curry down because I thought I was gonna drop it. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Big Friendly Grub today. I hope you enjoyed the video game grub and if you want to see me do more of these, then let me know. If you have any ideas for them, let me know, because I really enjoy them. They are really, really, I don't know why I'm moving about like that. They're, they're really, really different. They, they're a chance to try and see if like these foods from these games are actually any good, and that is actually really good. And I'd really be up for doing some more. So let me know if you want me to try any other ones. And also thank you to my friend Kerry from work, who very kindly loaned me the hat and Pichu and the Pokeball because I didn't have any of those things and I do like a prop for these things. But that's it from me, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, like the video, subscribe, all of that stuff, and I will peek a peek you next time on Big Friendly Rub. I don't know why I went that route. Bye.